Howdy folks. Good afternoon. How are we all doing today? Here's a part three video and this will be my last video for the day. So I'm once again back at the same spot that I was back on Sunday. I'm over at the Kaspersen Beach near Venice. However though, this is going to be a bit different in terms of what this video is going to cover. Yeah, I actually just went for a little swim and water's a little chilly. It's getting to that time of the year where, yeah, the water's just going to cool down more and more. But as part of this video, I wanted to point out a couple of different things. So when I was in the water doing some snorkeling, I actually found a couple of separate specimens while I was in there. So, we're gonna start with this guy, right here. So, this specimen that we're looking at is something called a Venus, or it's called a calico clam. So this is essentially a type of bivalve. So in other words, there's another shell that's completely symmetrical with this shell. But the calico clam is so named for the fact of the colors that are found on its shell. You can see that there's plenty of streaks of brown and white. And every now and then you might actually see a little bit of black, but um, in this case there really isn't. But for that reason, that's why this is called a calico clam. And as you can see, on the underside, it has a very creamy white color associated. So same thing, this is completely made out of calcium carbonate. And oftentimes, you'll find these in uh, kind of like moderate depth water. So you have to go out slightly further, not much. I mean, like where that person is, you have to maybe go out another... 20 or so feet away from the coastline. So, yes, this is the calico clam. So now moving on, this was actually one of my favorite finds right here. This is something called a lightning whelk. And this is a young lightning whelk. So you may be wondering, why do they really call this a lightning whelk in the first place? There we go. So, if you look at the streaks very carefully along the shell here, you can see these streaks resemble that of lightning, you know, in terms of the path that follows. And so as a result, the name lightning really stuck by. But what's particularly fascinating about the lightning whelk in particular, is it's one of the only types of gastropods that has its shell opening to the left. So let me let me show it from my perspective. So you see, it opens to the left. Most gastropods have their shell open to the right. So in a sense, these are actually quite unique to find. You know, it's a unique uh, piece. Sorry, there's an ant on me. This is a unique piece of nature. And oftentimes you'll find these at a bit more shallow depth. But then it has a direct opposite. It's called a knobbed whelk. So as opposed to it opening to the left, it opens to the right. But you won't really find knobbed whelk in the Gulf. You'll see more of those on the Atlantic side. But what's neat about the lightning whelk too is they produce these, wish I had an example with me, but they produce these egg masses that sort of resembles looking at a like a slinky or even a spiral. It's actually quite neat to look at. But those masses have 
you know, probably hundreds if not thousands of individual eggs used for reproduction. So, that's a piece on the lightning whelk. Okay, so then one last piece. These are both the same, but I just wanted to show a bit of comparison. So these are called olive shells. Same thing, these are another type of gastropod. As you can see, their shell opens to the right. But what's neat about the olive shells is they have more of a cylindrical shape, as you can see. And oftentimes, same thing, you'll kind of find these in moderate depth, depths. Jeez, I couldn't say that word for a second. And <clears throat> oftentimes, you'll see that they have plenty of streaks along their shell. So it's a bit similar to that calico clam that I was pointing out. But rest assured, it's a total separate species of gastropod. But oftentimes, like right around this part of the shell, towards the bottom, it actually has a foot, which actually helps them thrust off the sand. So, this I always thought was, and that's actually, I believe, right here, that's where its eye comes from. That's how they can see where they're going. I, yeah, as far as I recall, anyways. But yes, this is the olive shell. And sometimes, if the shell hasn't been used in a while, it starts to have varied color. So that's why I brought out both of these examples, as I noticed when I was in the water. So it just shows what can happen to a shell over time upon exposure. But I'll be sure to return these back into the water. So alright you guys. Just wanted to share some of my Aquaman side of it. Yeah, oftentimes, those are all native, by the way, and some of them are actually great you know, food resource, too. So that was why I wanted to do a video on them. And also, you know, whenever some of you go to the beach in the near future, some of you will actually know what it is. And what, are, what some of the unique characteristics are. All right, you guys, I hope all of you enjoy your Wacky Wednesday, and once again, journey on a journey is outwards. Take care, folks. See ya. Take care, you guys.